An Unforgettable Legacy, The Rise and Fall of Nokia. It is rare for someone to be unfamiliar with the name Nokia. You're likely to hear about a Nokia from your parents if you ask about their first smartphone. Throughout its long existence, the company has gone through many changes around the world. Did you know that Nokia has been around since the 1850s? Now here's the story of Nokia, which shows how one man's idea changed the world of communication. Nokia was founded in 1865 by a Finnish mining engineer, Frederick Eichstam, who started out as a simple paper mill operator in Tampere, a city located in southwestern Finland. At the time, the demand for paper in Europe was high, so Eidstam decided to work in this field. It wasn't long before Eidstam expanded this operation in 1868 to the nearby town of Nokia, which is located near the Nokia Verta River, 15 kilometers west of Tampere. Thus, the Nokia name was born in 1871, inspired by its location. This way, Nokia LTD was formed in 1871 when Eidstam and his close friend Leo Mechelen expanded into Finland. After becoming Finland's largest paper manufacturer, the company started exporting products to other European countries. Nokia pioneered new production methods in this area where forests were the only significant natural resource. Due to the industry's growing energy intensity, the company built more of its own power plants. It also became the first ever Finnish company to list on the Helsinki Stock Exchange in 1915. But soon, Frederick Eidstam, founder of Nokia, died in 1916 at the age of 78, leaving the company to his successor. The company was a paper manufacturer until the end of World War I, then entered the electricity business shortly thereafter. After the Second World War, Nokia underwent some major changes. While Finland was adjacent to the Soviet Union, it always maintained economic relations with Scandinavian and Western countries, leading to Nokia becoming one of the world's top exporters. When Nokia was unable to achieve strong internal growth, it focused majorly on acquisitions. Due to this, Nokia encouraged its expansion within Finland, and eventually merged with Finnish Rubber Works, founded in 1898, as well as Finnish Cable Works, established in 1912. As a result of the merger of three different companies in 1967, Nokia Corporation was formed. By 1966, they produced various products such as rubber boots, car tires, cables, and even television at this time, as well as announcing its first public offering. Nokia established a division in 1967 to develop hardware and software design and manufacture data processing, industrial automation, and communication systems. Over time, the company grew into a number of divisions focusing on developing information systems, including personal computers, workstations, and mobile devices. Nokia became a leading producer of network equipment during the 1970s. To build automatic cellular phone systems, they teamed up with Solora, which they eventually acquired in 1984. After that, Nokia introduced the Mobira Cityman 900 in 1987. In October 1987, the former president of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, made a call from Helsinki to Moscow for a conference on the Mobira Cityman 900, making the phone iconic and earning it the nickname, the Gorba. In 1989, the company delivered the first 2G system, which was developed with the help of GSM. In 1991, Finland's then Prime Minister, Harry Hokeri, initiated the first GSM call in the world. In the first few years of the 1990s, Nokia's top leaders decided to focus on the telecommunications market alone, which resulted in the closure of its data, power, television, tire, and cable businesses. In 1992, Nokia launched the Nokia 1011, the first GSM phone, which changed the landscape of the mobile phone industry forever. There are reports that the device had a talk time of 90 minutes and had the ability to store 99 contacts. This device was also known as the Mobira Cityman 2000. In later years, the company developed LCDs for laptops as well as CTRs. A mini laptop was also released, but was discontinued shortly afterwards. However, mobile phones will always remain the company's greatest asset, which majorly has been sold in more than 130 countries around the world. One of the most famous models of all time is the Nokia 2100 series, 
which featured the Nokia ringtone for the first time. Nokia projected sales of 400,000 units, but the series ended up being a blockbuster with more than 20 million being sold worldwide. Over the course of the late 1990s and early 2000s, the company's revenue increased from 6.5 billion euro to 31 billion euro. 1996 saw the launch of Nokia's 9000 communicator. Besides offering word processing and spreadsheet capabilities, the $800 all-in-one phone also lets users send emails, faxes, and even browse the web. Despite a loyal following, the phone wasn't a commercial success. In the same year, Nokia also released a slider phone, the Nokia 8110. In the popular science fiction film The Matrix, this device was called the Banana Phone. Their next release was the Nokia 6100 series, which sold more than 41 million units in 1998. This was also the year Nokia passed Motorola as the world's largest manufacturer of mobile phones. Additionally, the Nokia 6110 came pre-installed with the Snake game for the first time. Adapting to the changing technology of the 2000s, Nokia began to produce both sophisticated multimedia phones and low-cost devices. During the year 2001, Nokia launched its first camera phone, the 7650, in which a built-in camera was included. It was one of the first to have full-color display. Immediately following this, Nokia launched a 3G phone, the Nokia 6650, in 2002, debuting itself as the world's first 3G phone. Nokia launched the 7280 Lipstick Phone in 2004. In Fortune Magazine's annual Best Products of the Year list, the device was named as one of the best products of the year for its Fashion Phone line. A version of it also appeared in the famous band Pussycat Dolls video for Beep. As a result of the introduction of Apple's first iPhone in 2007 and the growing popularity of touchscreens, Nokia unveiled its first all-touch smartphone in 2008. The device was called the 5800 Express Music, and it was also the first with a touch-driven operating system known as Symbian V9.4. A year after the launch of Android version 1.0, Nokia's quarterly profits dropped by 30%, and sales dropped by almost 3.1%. During the same period, iPhone sales skyrocketed by roughly 330%. As a result, over 1,700 Nokia employees were laid off in 2009. Late in the year, the struggling Finnish company finally admitted that it wasn't responding quickly to the market changes, as Apple and BlackBerry were increasingly dominant, as well as newcomers like Samsung, HTC, and LG. In late 2009, Nokia appointed Stephen Elop, who previously headed Microsoft's business software division, as its new CEO. In addition, he was the company's first non-Finnish leader. Despite an increase in profits for the company in 2010, it continued to cut jobs. As a result of Nokia and Microsoft's partnership, Nokia announced the Lumia 800 and Lumia 710 smartphones later in 2011. The company also announced its Windows Phone 8-based flagship Lumia 920, which was criticized for being bulky and large. The smartphone made the list of the top-selling phones on Amazon in November 2012, and also topped Expanses' charts in the UK during the same period. The legacy created by Eidstam was ended in 2014 when Microsoft acquired Nokia. Nevertheless, a paper company from Finland made a great impact on the telephone industry, even though it was unable to succeed later due to tight competition. Let's get to know some more interesting Nokia facts. Number one, in 1887, Spanish guitarist Francisco Tarrega recorded a guitar tune called Grand Vals, which later became the famous Nokia tune. The song was originally called Grand Valse, but was changed to Nokia tune in 1999. Number two, for the first time, Finland released its own country-themed set of emojis. Among these phones is the Nokia 3310 emoji, also known as Unbreakable, due to its unbeatable durability. Number three, Generally, the number four is considered unlucky in Asia, as it sounds similar to death, which is why Nokia doesn't start the name of any of its phones with the number four. Number four. SMS tones that Nokia uses are thought to be Morse code, which codes for connecting people. Number five. The first Nokia handheld phone was the Mobira Talkman, 
which is worth a whopping 4,560 euros in today's time. And number six, the Nokia 1100 became the world's top-selling mobile phone and consumer electronic in May 2007. The biggest reason for Nokia's downfall was probably its refusal to embrace drastic change at the right time. Despite its late embrace of the smartphone revolution, the company made a number of strategic errors once it finally got on board. Whatever the case may be, nothing lasts forever, and whatever goes up must come down. But Nokia is still an incredibly important part of mobile phone history, and it will never be forgotten. Thank you for staying with us till the end. We hope you enjoyed it and liked it. If you're wondering where to find more interesting news from around the globe, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay up to date with our latest uploads. See you soon.